Hey Stags fans, welcome back to another edition, in fact our final edition of this decade of From the Director's Chair, JJ Duke along with Fairfield Athletics Director Paul Schlickman. We're coming to you from an area that I've been looking forward to for a while. It's frigid outside, so let's make ourselves <laughs> feel like it's warm. We're coming from the Pino Golf Studio. This is an outstanding facility for our Fairfield men's and women's golf teams where obviously with the Northeast, conditions aren't great year round, but you always have a place to play. Sure is, it's an amazing facility. We're you know so grateful to, the, to Vic Pino and his family. Great Fairfield legacy. Um, with Vic and his son and his daughter all alum, so very much a, a, a family spirit of generosity to provide this incredible facility for our men's and women's golf teams. You're not going to find a family that has more passion for Fairfield and also Fairfield golf. So incredible asset for our golf teams to get better every day and uh, as a recruiting tool and uh, and certainly today in light of the weather for us to be sitting here nice and warm and possibly maybe even uh, check out our maybe golf. we'll test it out afterwards hey never know, you know. but uh, yeah appreciate the golf teams allowing us to utilize their facility for today but um we stepped back a little bit because even though we are right in the middle of the winter we had an outstanding fall season here with fairfield three teams making great strides right. uh, throughout the season and two of them making the ncaa tournament we start out with jackie Kane's group, Fairfield Field Hockey, winning the league, winning their first ever NCAA tournament game, and making a lot of noise right. along the way. Amazing year for Coach Kane, Kane excuse me, and, and Fairfield Stags Field Hockey. You know, her 25th season, very much a benchmark for her. As you mentioned, you know, the last show of the decade, a 25th um, anniversary season for her, and she chose that year to have a career year. They beat a team in every NCAA Division I conference. 10 overall. They were nationally ranked for eight weeks in the National Coaches Poll. Regular season and tournament champions in the NEC, first year in the NEC, uh, given that transition. Fourth NCAA tournament in school history. First NCAA tournament win in program history. Best record in school history, second best in the country. Lucy Perseal, NFHCA All-American, which is an incredible benchmark for her. Tribute to the type of athletes that we're attracting and, and developing in that sport. NEC Coaching Staff of the Year, Mid-East Region Coaching Staff of the Year, and finally going back to Coach Kane and her personal accolades, her 200th career victory. So unbelievable. Uh, so proud of that team and what they accomplished. Really codifying it by, by saying this, you know, I was, I was fortunate to, to be on the sidelines for the NCAA tournament game that we hosted here and be part of making history and sharing that with the team, um, but also being on the road with them at UConn and playing against a team that is a perennial national championship caliber program and having them on their heels and showing that we belonged. Really excited about that and uh, proud of them and I think it depicts the growth we're making hopefully across the board with our expectations and aspirations for all programs. In addition to your laundry list, I'm going to add one go line it, to it. Go for it nearly returns entire team for next season so maybe, maybe the most important point yes. great point on your part and uh you know even Lucy coming back so that's you know it's that's exciting and the one thing I, I tried to impart to coach Kane right after the UConn game was recalibrating our collective vision and their individual expectations that we belonged on that field and so we have to reframe how we think about not only how they can compete in that within that program, but that's what we're trying to do with all our programs, that we can compete at that level and we do belong at that level and we're trying to continually progress towards that. Well, of course, congratulations to Coach Kane and the rest of the team. We're seriously very much looking forward to what they're going to bring to the table in 2020. Another group that always seems to be amongst the top in their league. They've done it again this year. It's Fairfield Volleyball, MAC champions now for the 11th time in program history. But this time, a little bit of drama added to the tale where they hosted the tournament, but they didn't make things easy for themselves. But boy, was that a fun weekend. Right. I actually I have a little bit of a funny story because I, I, I was I happened to be out of town for the the semi-final of the MAC championship. I was at a wedding um, and I was trying to sneak watching the stream on my iPhone as, as the w wedding was beginning to, to uh, take place. Um, was, uh, was, was anxious, um, but I would say I did feel this quiet sense of confidence in them because I felt like all year they had shown this sense of resiliency and grit that at the end of the day I thought would carry through 
And I just felt like they needed to get that first W against Marist and then things would fall into place. But credit Marist for giving us all we could handle in a, in a very competitive MAC championship environment. But again, very proud of our team and winning on our home court in an incredible atmosphere and showing that they are the perennial team to beat in the MAC. You know, certainly a fun championship because, of course, you had a big crowd on both days that Fairfield played, came back, as you said, against Maris, and then, of course, you have your traditional rival in Quinnipiac is in terms of proximity, and it was a good atmosphere, and certainly it was a day that I think a lot of people are going to remember, and also Fairfield showing themselves well uh, in the NCAA tournament against Minnesota. Right, again, credit Coach Kress for continuing to nurture them throughout that season getting Manuel Nicolini back to uh, peak performance after the disappointing injury she had last year and an incredible turnaround for her and the accolades that she received as, as player and setter of the year, first time in our history. Coach Kress, coach of the year, um, incredible job by, by his staff. Akin to what I said about field hockey, traveling out to Minnesota, Big Ten volleyball is as good as it gets, playing in front of 6,000 people, incredible atmosphere, as big time as it gets in that sport, and getting out there and competing. And, and showing that we belong and not being intimidated. And did we play our best? Maybe not, but I felt like we showed that the Stags belong on that stage and they have great expectations, again, and aspirations for that program, not just to win championships, but to go to the NCAA tournament, compete and win. So I, I fully expect that that trend and that, that mantra will continue. So congratulations to, to Stags Volleyball, great season. And we talk about kind of rising to the occasion, feel like, like you belong on the right. stage. Our last group that we're going to discuss from the fall is Fairfield Women's Soccer. This is a group that, you know, they've been looking to make that stride under now second year head coach Dave Barrett, and they've right. certainly made that stride. They got to the championship game of the MAC, first time that they've been in that stage in a half decade or so. And right. I talked with Coach Barrett after, and he said the expectation is now being in this game, hosting conference tournament games being at that level and I think they've certainly made the right step. Absolutely. Great job by Coach Barrett and his staff. Again, terrific staff and again you, you talk about the importance of of having the right people in place. Field hockey, volleyball, women's soccer, all coaches of the year, coaching staffs of the year is, is a more apt description of, of each one of those. Viewing women's soccer from my chair along the way, um, they just continue to improve at every step of the way. and. Coach Barrett and I heard him say it too after their last game and that they have reset the standard for what it means to be part of Fairfield Stags women's soccer. And that's terrific. And that's the common theme amongst the three sports that we just talked about. And, and again, across the board with all our programs. We're trying to recalibrate, reset those expectations and standards. And, and again, very bright future for them. Most of their team returning, uh, a very highly regarded incoming freshman class, going from ninth to second and getting to the finals and credit Monmouth running up against a really really good Monmouth team but we'll get there and we'll be back really proud of, of everything they accomplished and not just in the region and in the, in the conference and in the region but climbing almost 200 points in the RPI is in, in one indicator an important indicator of how far that program has come so great job really excited for them in their future we turn from an outstanding fall to the, the, the midst of the winter season right now and staying with the team that always consistently is there at the top. Uh, swimming has been outstanding over the last couple of years, especially on the women's side under Coach Bruno. It's become the hashtag win the MAC over the last Thank couple of years and now it's become win the ECAC and they've done that for the second year on the women's side and also the men, a very solid second place finish in that championships and it, this is kind of that benchmark mid-season report card almost to see where do you stand as they head into MAX in February. Right. Swimming is always interesting because it seems to, to kick into gear really quickly on the competition side, and it's almost two seasons within a season. Um, Coach Bruno's done an incredible job. The women seem to just have it click a little faster than the men have. Uh, they are now, to some degree, the hunted instead of the hunter on the women's side. Incredible athletes, very committed, and he's establishing a great culture across the board within both programs. They are, I think, probably on both sides a little bit more of a work in progress from start to finish this year, but I do believe they will be there in the end. And I think they displayed that uh, they're finding their groove, if you will, uh, at the ECAC Championship and, and with the results that they've shown. That he always competes in a very competitive schedule early on to try and prepare them for that first benchmark, the ECACs, and I think the results are beginning to show that, that they will progress and hopefully peak at the right time for the MAC Championships, which is it's going to be here before you know it. 
It seems like that's always how the winner goes, which now we right. switch to the hardwood. And uh, the men's team under first year, now head coach Jay Young, making the strides that I think a lot of people want to see out of this group, picking up their first victory, of course, under the new head coach against Holy Cross back in November. And I think the big moment was down in Orlando at the Invitational, knocking off Texas A&M, in addition to competing very well against USC and Davidson. And I, I know, of course, Results are one thing, but you can see the progress of this group. And there's a lot of excitement brewing over at the gym. 100%. I was, again, I was fortunate to be down there to see all that. And I've seen most of their games to date. I think you're right. I think the progress is, is at this point is, is not about wins and losses. Uh, we always want to see more games in the left column than the right column, as does Coach Young and his staff and his players. But the hallmark or the identity that, that we talked about early on that we thought Coach Young and his staff would bring and instill in this program has translated 100%. They are playing with great energy, with great toughness, playing really hard for 40 minutes across the board. I and mean, we're going 10 deep and guys aren't missing a beat. So I, I think they're sque he and they are squeezing every ounce out of themselves in terms of their effort and their grit and their resilience and showing that on the court. And it's translating really well. We've played an incredibly difficult non-conference schedule, as you know, I believe as our fans know, and acquitted ourselves really well in that framework. So it was really nice to see in a really tough stretch right before we go to the Advocare tournament playing Maryland, really tough on their home court, playing USC to the wire coming back from 21 down to, to almost beat Davidson and then have it click against an SEC opponent on the last day of that tournament and have those guys feel that sense of accomplishment and reward. So I think that will translate really well for them. We're always, you know, at, at our level, at a place like Fairfield, excited about beating a Power 5 team. But it's more about, I think, instilling them that, okay, if we continue this process, then, then the outcomes will continue to flow. And I think they believe, and I, I think we're, we're winding down with a couple of non-conference games left and looking forward to Mac play. And I'm really excited about the progress of that team under that staff and the effort of the guys, and I'm really excited about what's going to transpire in the next couple months. Well, you talk about Mac play and you know, Fairfield fans, the next time you get to see the Stags in action at home, it's going to be on January the 8th as Fairfield opens up their home slate in Mac play. They'll take on Maris over at the Webster Bank Arena. And uh, On the flip side, the women's team, they're putting together some nice results right. are right around 500 uh, as we enter in their next home game against Brown on Sunday right. the 22nd. And, you know, they've put together a nice schedule, some very tough regional opponents, wins against Navy, wins against Hofstra, a Brown team that's always one of the top level teams in the Ivy. And you know they're also building in the direction that they hope for. Right, right. excited about their, their play as of late. Again, I think they're finding their rhythm, if you will. And I think Coach is, is finding his rotations and, and putting people in the right spots, which is why I think that translated well in, in a couple of nice wins at home against some quality regional opponents. I think they're trending well and excited again about what, what they can do in the league and uh, looking forward to, to them kind of continuing to get better as the season goes on. So now we end the basketball talk for there for now, but of course always stay tuned, fairfieldstags.com and of course on all social media platforms as the teams build into the league play. Recently, you also had some news and the university had some news where you announced the We Are Stags initiative. Mm -hmm. And of course, big uh, announcement, not only on website, but as well on social media, kind of breaking down exactly what this entails. But you know, tell us in your own words what this moment meant for you as well as for the university. I'm smiling because uh, I would, I'll start by saying this. Well, first, I could probably go on for half an hour about this, but given constraints, I'll, I'll try and to, to be succinct about it. I would say this, it is, I smile because I, I feel so good about this initiative and this platform and, and what it's doing for us as a department more than anything else. In, in my 25 plus years in this business, it's one of the, the things I'm most pleased about and proud of in terms of a, a department uh, platform of, of what, defining who you are and who you aspire to be. We Are Stags is the mantra that in, encapsulates this effort. Uh, that is meant to be a defining, unifying moniker, if you will, of what we're all about and what it means to be a stag. And within that framework, we created a, a very shared vision and purpose that, that translates into 
a vision statement about providing a championship caliber experience for all our athletes. A mission focusing on holistic development and student athletes and staff becoming the best version of themselves so that we in turn as a department can become the best version of who we want to be. All directly linked and in sync with the purpose and vision of the university. Values-based, student-centric, outcomes focused. And, and so we're really trying to be very thoughtful about how we go about this and really a heartbeat of it if you will is uh, four cultural commitments within that framework. Stags compete, stags care, stags lead, stags grow. And those were very uh, purposeful in terms of trying to be a translational mantra platform guidepost that express and are indicative of our Jesuit values but that serve as a, as a daily guidepost for who we are in everything. Our daily operations, our strategic planning, our branding efforts, everything that we do. So we, this has been a, a, a very long process over the past year and a half. Um, really excited about, I think, it taking hold and, uh, and our student athletes and staff buying into it in a very real and thoughtful way. And I think it will continue to provide uh, a great framework and philosophical benchmark for us to continue to aspire and achieve those expectations that I talked about with, with volleyball and field hockey and all our programs. And, and ultimately, we put that all in place because I believe, just as Fairfield and Dr. Nemec aspire to be the modern Jesuit Catholic University that provides a student experience that is second to none, I want us to provide a student athlete experience and a Division I athletic experience that is second to none tried to be succinct in that, but that's really what it comes down to. And, and I have never been more excited or believed more strongly in um, that as, as our core to try and achieve those objectives and those goals. And we're at the right place to do it. We've got the right people in place from the top on down. We've got an alumni network that supports and believes in that mantra. We try to have it be reflective of all those constituents. And so, the best part about Fairfield is, is a great sense of shared purpose and everybody trying to translate that into common action and, and that's what this is all about. So great stuff, really excited about it, really passionate about it, believe very deeply in it and, uh, and we're going with great guns with it. Definitely bringing the community together and that's what I love and for those at home who want to you know, be involved with this, if you love social media like myself, like this gentleman over here, make sure to use the hashtag WeAreStags. You know, let us know your, you know, the pride that you have in this Fairfield University and you know, definitely things that we'll be keeping an eye on as we go throughout. And Another thing that we always like to bring up that always brings a smile to your face is academics. Now obviously our student athletes and all students here at Fairfield University in the midst of their finals right now. Good luck to them. Uh, but very recently, uh, the Honor Society of Alpha Sigma Nu just inducted, or just had their induction a couple of weeks ago, their most recent class, and four student athletes were on that okay. list as well. Uh, Carrie Clark and Angeline McGuire, two recent graduates of Fairfield University, and also Maria Nitti and Cameron Jeb, that's rowing, softball, swimming, and the dance team, okay. all just inducted. Well, it's a great honor, and we're always proud to have some of our student athletes be part of that and be awarded that. Uh, I'm not surprised because, um, first of all, having athletes from four different sports or four different you know, aspects of our department represented is indicative of the across the board caliber of, of people we have and the type of student athletes we're recruiting. Um, but going back to those that we are stags platform and, and cultural commitments, that's one aspect of displaying that. It's, it's this idea that, that our athletes on a daily basis are truly, truly embody and, 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 and carry out every day those Jesuit principles and Ignatian values and, and in particular service to others in this holistic development. So it's, it's, it's a great honor and always proud and, and pleased to have some of our athletes uh, be on the receiving end of it. Now it's time for our favorite segment that we have here on From the Director's Chair. It's Ask Paul, where you at home have the chance to ask this gentleman to my right any questions they have about Fairfield University athletics, whether that be the inner workings, something on marketing, anything that you like. Let us know. All you have to 
do is go to fairfieldstags.com slash askpaul. We have a couple of questions. Uh, a few of those are going to just combine into one. Recently, Fairfield University had their <laughs> Arena 100 donor event. Uh, love to hear a little bit about that as well as an update, any updates they have on the Convocation Center. Sure, absolutely. The uh, Arena 100 Be the Next campaign was launched back in mid-November. And, and we've already seen some, some great response and success with that. So the idea behind it was really, um, as, as I think our audience knows and our constituents know, uh, we are raising every, every dollar um, to fund this building. And we have been really fortunate thus far and, and as a lead in to getting this project off the ground and seeing the progression of it to have some a core group of incredibly generous donors to get us to a certain benchmark that really um, made it uh, viable to continue on the timeline that, that, we're, that we're leaning towards. That being said, in order to achieve our final goals and objectives and the benchmarks that we need to to, to pay for the building, to, to get the shovel in the ground, we still had some more work to do. Uh, so this Arena 100 campaign was very much a, a, there's a pragmatic aspect to it. Um, we're asking, um, trying to get 100 donors to commit $25,000 a piece. You can do the math, that's $2.5 million. That is a significant chunk of, of money that will go towards uh, achieving our fundraising objectives um, to meet the needs of the building. I'll say philosophical part of this, that there's, there's such a widespread um, incredibly positive energetic response to this project for so many reasons people have been the 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 degree to which so many alums and community members have a, a love affair if you will with and, and great memories of games they spent in in alumni hall in the red sea madness bleachers watching basketball games here at fairfield um, so we wanted to kind of tap into that sense of widespread support and and the response has been incredible so we are in a very short period of time, we've reached you know, 25, 26 donors who've committed to that, which is incredible. And I think that's an indicator just how strongly people feel and are excited about this type of project and, and what it can do for our university, for our community, and so forth. Uh, absolutely, and for more information about uh, the new Convocation Center and how you can get involved, all you have to do is go to fairfieldstags.com slash arena. And of course, you know, this is the ongoing project, but one that obviously we're taking very seriously and trying to get done. And you mentioned the, the event that we held on December 8th, which had a great turnout, and, and we got some new um, contributors from that and a lot of momentum moving forward as a result of, of that event and the overall effort. So we're, we're looking for 74 more people to be the next and then be part of this, this great project and, and, and all that it entails. And one of the things that really excites me so much about um, this, the entirety of this project is, is the level of commitment that it has received uh, within the framework of the university from the Board of Trustees to our president, to, to you know, so many people within this community. And it's something that I think everybody feels strongly about, as I indicated amongst you know, our internal, external constituents. And so much so that within that, that framework of be the next, um, Dr. Nemec, our president, has, has committed to be the next. Uh, Wally Hallis, our vice president for advancement, has committed to be the next. Jay Young, our men's basketball coach, has committed to be the next. And, and it's something that, that I personally feel so strongly about given all the incredible conversations and stories that I've been regaled with to try and recreate this, this incredible atmosphere that, that people are so uh, enamored with and as it relates to Fairfield and Fairfield basketball that, that my wife Kristen and I have, have committed to be the next as well. So I think it's, it's, uh, it'll be the cornerstone of a, of a five-year master plan and the completion of that, that, that really will, uh, in my view, as I've said before, be a crown jewel for this campus and a transformational project, not only for the university, but for athletics. So again, really excited about it as we continue to make strides and we're still uh, making great progress towards that, that spring uh, benchmark to break ground. We're in the midst of, of a, a working group to work through all the transitional logistics for so many people that are impacted by the demolition of and move from 
alumni hall, but we're making uh, great strides with that. And so ongoing efforts, but making, making great, uh, great progress. Outstanding news. Last question that we have um, from someone at home wanted to know, Conference changes. Obviously, you know, in the last decade or so, there's been a lot of movement across the NCAA landscape. Is there anything in the future, perhaps, for Fairfield to you know, be looking at right. other horizons? Well, I, I would say this. I think if you're if you're a Division One athletics director, you you constantly have to have a working knowledge and and have your thumb on the pulse of of what's cooking with that. And there could be any number of factors that impact that, as as you alluded to, a decade or so ago there was a, a, a massive transition of conference realignment. And, and I, we, we've seen pockets of it here and there with um, either Division II programs, you know, going into Division I conferences or, or individual institutions moving from, from one to the other over the course of the last decade. There has been some discussion given the notoriety of the uh, name, image, and likeness um, talk and potential legislation uh, associated with that, that that could precipitate another shift, whether it's a separation of the power five from the mid-majors or something of, of that ilk. So it's really just something that, that I have to constantly pay attention to. It would be disingenuous to say that that, that isn't a, a conversation that, that I, we have on our campus, as I think most ADs in, in my position would. And, and that's something that we, we have to be constantly aware of and, and be prepared for if, in fact, another shift occurs. We want to put Fairfield in the best position possible that we can, um, because my, ultimately my fiduciary responsibility is, is to do that. And it goes back to what, exactly what we talked about at the outset. Dr. Nemec and the board are trying to position Fairfield to be you know, at the pinnacle of what it means to be an institution of higher learning. I'm trying to put us at the pinnacle of what it means to be a Division One school at our level within the framework of Division One athletics. If we're doing that, the outcome of the pro that will, will take care of itself. So we have to continue to strive to be a or the preeminent program within our current framework, and that's the MAC. We're a longstanding member of the MAC. We we have great respect for and association with the institutions, and particularly like institutions in our league. Great competitive rivalries. And we want to continue to, to be a premier program within that framework. And, and again, just be prepared for, for, for what takes place. If I had a crystal ball, I could look forward and probably answer that question more directly. But, but that's really the, the, the genuine, pragmatic answer to it. And of course, hashtag win the max sounds pretty good to me. So we'll keep it at that. But Paul, thanks for answering those questions. And again, for you at home, if you want to ask questions for the next episode of from the director's chair, all you have to do is go to fairfieldstags.com slash ask Paul. And I think that's going to do it for us. Uh, Paul, hope you have a great holiday season. Same to you, JJ. Thanks Thank you very, very much. much and uh, for all of you at home as well, from all of us here at Fairfield University and Fairfield University Athletics, we hope that you enjoy your holiday season and that we'll see you in 2020. Until next time, go Stags.